go to the radius, the bone that is more on the lateral side of the forearm, then the portion that kind of looks like a rounded tabletop, perhaps, is the proximal end of the bone. And if you go down to the distal end, you'll find a smooth, small face right here, or facet. This is going to be the ulna notch, or ulnar notch. And it is here that it is going to be articulating with the distal end of the ulna. So therefore, since the ulna is medial, then with this you can identify the medial side of the radius, the distal end, the proximal end, and therefore you can also then define anterior and posterior. Now as far as some of the component parts, we've got the head, the head of the radius. The ulnar notch, as I've already pointed out, and then we've also got a styloid process, this little bony projection here. This little styloid process can be felt quite easily also. Again, if you examine your wrist, then if the radius is on the lateral side and the thumb side, if you come down here, then you can feel a bump projecting out here. This would be the styloid process of the radius. This now takes us into the hand, starting first with the wrist. We've got eight bones. Collectively, they're referred to as carpals. Individually, these individual carpals, if we were to divide it up into two rows, the more proximal row, the more distal row, and looking at the more proximal row on the lateral side, the thumb side, then this one is the scaphoid, which is the one that gets fractured most often. Then we've got the lunate, and then we've got the triquetrium, and then a small one projecting out as the pisiform. As you go then to the more distal row, going from lateral, the thumb side, to medial, then we've got the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and the hamate. Going into the body of the hand itself, which would be all of this area of the hand in here, these are metacarpals, or metacarpals. We can identify them individually also by using a simple number system, and usually the numbers are expressed as a Roman numeral, starting with the thumb. So the first metacarpal, second metacarpal, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal. Lastly, you get down into the fingers and into the thumb. The bones in those fingers and the thumb are collectively called phalanges. To be specific, the ones that are in your fingers, you notice that you have three phalanges each. So they would simply be the proximal phalange, middle phalange, the distal phalange of an index finger, of a middle finger, of a ring finger, or of a little finger. But notice the thumb is slightly different and then instead of having two phalanges, or instead of having three phalanges, there's two. There's something called the proximal and the distal phalange. So these represent the bones of the upper extremity and the bones of the rib cage. Thank you.